iconic, timeless, fashion. These are all words that everyone unanimously agrees on to describe the mischief big red boot. So today we're gonna make it inside a blender. So the most important part here is reference imagery. And when I first did this, the shoes had not come out yet. So there were not that many reference images. But what we want is at least a good front angle and side angle, ideally some kind of a top angle, just enough angles to see what it really looks like. So we're going to import those as reference images. I have this as a complete side angle. I have this as a straight on front angle. Then I have this as an angle where we can see the inside. So inside of Blender, clicking the X up here for the X axis, because when you add the reference image, it adds it for wherever your view is pointing. We're going to add image background. Navigate to where our reference images are. It's a little small, so I'm gonna press S for scale. And we have a reference image for the side of the shoe. Now, if you move around, the reference image goes away. It only shows up when you're clicking on that X axis and viewing it from the just straight on X axis. So what we're doing next is we are adding mesh, mesh, circle. So that circle pops up. We can't really see it too well from our view, but before you do anything, it asks you how many vertices are in that circle. So 14 is a good number for me. I think the default is something like 32, which I think for this is a bit too much. You want the smallest number that can work. And then with our circle selected, pressing S to scale it up. And G to move it over. I just wanna be able to see really where this thing is. So I'm just trying to line it up. All right, there we go, nice and big. I'm just trying to line it up with where our shoe is because this is our starting point. So I'm pressing tab to get into edit mode. You can see our vertices showing up and then from you know a different angle, it looks like this. And that's pretty much what we want. So back to the x-axis angle, press the tab to get into edit mode, extruding up and then just guiding it along the shoes. That's E for extrude, and then just moving the mouse till it ends up where we want it. E for extrude, move the mouse up till it ends where we want. E to extrude, up to right there. So now we're getting a bit of a focal distortion situation happening up there. We know that that's supposed to be straight, so I'm just leaving that straight. I'm gonna go into wireframe mode and select the bottom of what we've made so far. Go back into solid and keep going back down. Press E to extrude to a certain point there. E to extrude. This is also going to get subdivided. So I do want to follow this line right here, but I'm also trying to think of what the subdivision is going to do. And I think the subdivision is going to bridge that gap a little bit for us. But at a certain point, what we begin to do is press S for scale. Right here, I will start to do it a little bit with this loop selected down here. Back to X, press S for scale and then G to move it into the right place. Then E to extrude down and roughly about the same amount that we've been doing. Then press S for scale again, G to move it over, S for scale, G to move it over, S for scale. I mean, we're getting there. We're getting there, the boot's shaping up. You can see it, you can see where we're going right now. So again, E to extrude down and at this point, if we keep doing S for scale, it's just going to make the boot like really, really, really wide. So you can kind of roughly see what's going on. Yeah, the boot doesn't need to be any wider <laughs> at this point. It just needs to be longer, you could say. So back to the X axis, and instead of S for scale, the whole thing, I'm going to do S for scale and then press Y to just make it longer on that Y axis. And then extrude down again, similar amount, S and then Y, extrude down again, that might be it. So then I'm going back to wireframe mode and box selecting our top part because we have to do our little, whatever that's called, back into solid mode. I say E to extrude up to about there. You could press Z to lock it into the Z axis while it's moving and then you guessed it, S for scale. I'm gonna go a little bit wider knowing that it's going to kind of make it come back in. 
E to extrude again, press Z to lock it to the Z axis. S for scale back down. And then if we move around, this is a rough, this is a rough big red boot. I mean, this, this is a start. This is a start for sure. So I'm gonna go into wireframe mode. <clears throat> And now we can kind of see the points where it is or is not exactly lining up. I'm going to tab back into object mode and go ahead and subdivide this. Not looking too bad to me. In wireframe mode, select a level, scale it out until it looks more like how we want it to look. So another thing we're going to do to help with the shape, especially for up here, is to add some loop cuts. So you got this loop cut right here within edit mode. Click that and then I'm going to do S for scale. Kind of scale that up and press G and the Z axis. Kind of move that around until it looks how we want it to. Add another loop cut down here. S for scale until it does what we want it to do. And then it doesn't have that solid lip like the reference image has. So how I'm going to do that solid lip, tab back into edit mode, and then you guessed it, I'm going to loop cut again. This loop cut is going to be, yes, yeah, so if you loop cut kind of below that lip, you can click and drag up and then that's pretty close. Now some of this is looking like a little bit wonky. So I'm going to go back to the box select Go back to the wireframe. See how we can move this thing around, get it to look a little bit better. I mean, tell me that's not a big red boot right there. That's a that's a big red boot. That's it's not red, but that's that's a boot and it's big. And you could imagine, you could imagine what it's gonna look like when it's red. For these these edges, we're gonna select those. Look at it from our Y axis, and I'm going to do S, X. This time like that, and then like this one looks like it's a little bit too much. And you can mess with it. It depends on your application here on how much this is really going to matter. So to complete the inside, we're basically doing a similar process. We don't have a, a reference for the complete total inside. So I'm going to option click in the middle of these vertices to reselect the vertices at the very top here. Back to X, back to wireframe mode. I'm going to extrude down and press Z to just get us going straight down in there. Yeah, it's pretty good, okay. And then E, Z, E, Z, E, Z, E, Z. I'm just going to extrude all the way down. Then once you get to a certain point, you can start kind of uh, doing the same thing that we did before. S for scale. You can kind of move around there and see, yeah, how things are looking. Scale on the Y axis. So just the same thing that we did on the outside, we're doing again on the inside. Throw a subdivision on and I mean, it's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good. So those vertices are still selected. You could do um, F to fill all of that. Inset faces, click on the face that we want, and then you can drag it. Dragging it isn't really working, so then press scale, scale it down. Repeat that a couple times, press S for scale to scale it down. Then I am going to do the same thing up here. I'm gonna press option click to select all the vertices on this edge. Press F to fill that in. Go back to inset face, click on it, drag it. Press scale to move it down. Click on it, drag it. 
press scale, move it down. So at this point, you could also right click and select shade smooth. Now you have a smooth boot. You can make little tweaks, like it's a little bit pointy to me. So another thing you can do is you can add another image reference. So we can do add image background. Do our reference image from the front, S to scale it up. G to move it over. And let's see how that looks. According to this, it's way skinnier. So what we can do is select, our object is by default called circle. I'm just gonna call it boot. And then I'm going to do S for scale and then X for the X axis and see if we can get this to look a little bit closer. <laughs> it's like really skinny according to this there. Looks a little bit skinny to me, but you can tweak it, you can play with it. Go to shading, I'm in the material preview. New material. You're gonna be super surprised by this one. We're gonna click on base color and we're gonna make it red. Something red like that. Pretty super saturated again. You know, we can look at our image reference. Something pretty saturated. I feel like it's pretty smooth. Not that smooth. Pretty smooth. That's basically a big red boot. Load up an HDRI in here. Yeah, so here we are. I'm going to add in a, uh, a plane for this to sit on just so it feels a little more grounded. And there are, there are a couple more things that we could do to get this to look a little bit more real. And at this point, what you wanna do is subscribe. And what I'm going to do is select the whole bottom here within edit mode, shift D to duplicate, press Z to kind of move it down directly, and then go to mesh, separate, selection. Because by default, that's going to be part of the same object, so you want what you just selected to be a different object. We can take this object, we can do GZ, get it up really close. Tab into edit mode, A to select all. We can extrude that down a little bit. I might throw a couple loop cuts in there. So now we have a base. Hard to see in the reference images, but it has a little bit of that. So right now, this boot obviously looks a little too clean. It looks super, super smooth to the point where it looks fake. So one thing that I like to do is add a scuffed plastic roughness which I can link you to. So with Node Wrangler turned on, I'm going to go to Control T, take this out of the base color, and go to Vector, Bump. I actually like to use this roughness as a bump for some reason, looks cool. So I'm gonna to go to Open, Navigate to the Scuffed Plastic Roughness, Scuffed Plastic Rough, Connect that into our height. Ooh, you know, we might need to unwrap this. U, smart UV project. And what that gets us is a very, very rough looking boot. So first thing I'm going to do is turn this strength down from one to 0.1. What I want is subtle. So what about 0.01? Yeah, that you can barely see. So if it's 0 0.05, 0 0.03 for now. Yeah, 0 0.03 for now. You're gonna see it a little bit in the highlight that it has some texture that something is going on. It's, it's not completely, completely perfect because that's impossible. So last order of business would be the soul. So how do we tackle the soul? I have this image reference of the bottom of the shoe, so we're basically just going to use this image reference of the bottom of the shoe. Opening up this image in Photoshop, rotating at 90 degrees. I'm going to turn this into something to use as a map. 
change this thing to black and white. We don't really have to worry about that shadow over there too much. Do some levels here. Because we just want a good amount of contrast. We want like really, really, really high contrast here. So I think that looks pretty good for now. Save this as boot sole map. Then what we can do for here is click on this to make a new material. Change that one to sole. And this is, again, our separate piece underneath. This is not the actual bottom of the sole. This is our separate piece underneath. So we can go here, navigate to where our map is, select boot sole map. And again, this is not UV unwrapped. So we can go to UV editing, look at our sole. Click on the Z axis here. Click A to select all, U for unwrap. And for this one, I'm going to do project from view. Press A to select all the vertices in this window. S for scale, scale it up to take, oh, to take up the whole thing. You can do a material preview here. Uh, so I had to bump up the strength on here because it was so low, you couldn't really tell what was happening. So I bumped up the strength back to one for our soul here. Then in UV editing, you can see that it's reversed. So I'm just gonna do R to rotate and press 180 and then enter. And now we were getting somewhere on our soul. You, you, can, you can mess around with the placement until it gets where you want it to be. So a better way to do this is to just select this bottom because we don't want this edge to look all crazy the way that it looks right now. So if we select all the pieces on the very, very bottom, we have our same material here for the boot and this piece of the sole. So we're going to add a material slot. We're going to choose sole and we're going to assign sole to the part that's actively selected. So now that solves our, our problem that we were having on the side where it was looking all rough and bad right there. You, you can just have the same material for both and then assign sole to just the bottom like this. So that's it, that's a big red boot. I might do a part two with some fun ways to animate these also. Thanks for watching.